You're on, Doug. Go ahead. Great. Well, hello, everybody. I'm Doug from Dynamic Computing, and welcome to another episode of 10-Minute Amiga Retrocast. Well, that's usually how I introduce the shows. Um, I've actually been in the Amiga community since 1988. I started out as a Big 20 kid, then a Commodore 64 kid, and ended up with my Amiga 500 in uh, 1988. I saw the Amiga 1000, but uh, couldn't afford it being a 16-year-old at the time. But when I saw that machine come out at the $595 price point, I begged my mother to help me pay for it, and, and she did. It was either a trip to Europe with my class, my, uh, that was my senior class at the time, and she would help me pay for that, or get an Amiga. And I chose the Amiga, and I never looked back. Um, I used my Amiga 500 exclusively for years. I used it for both personal use and for business use. Um, when I was young, I was also an entrepreneur, and I, I helped my stepfather with his music business by helping publish music documents on my Amiga 500. Uh, when I was getting ready to go off to college, I ended up getting an Amiga 3000, which is probably the finest Amiga ever created. Love my AGA machines, but there's just something about that sweet Omega 3000. And those of you who've owned it understand that. Um, kept using it until I got into the PC field in the mid 90s, maybe 94, 95. Um, and the Amigas kind of just went in the closet. I pull them out every once in a while and play with them. Um, and then in uh, 2001, possibly 2002. I was poking around on uh, Amiga Kit back then and saw that they had some uh, new old stock SCOM Amiga 1200s. I thought, hey, why not? Ordered one and again, played with it for a while. But what I would always do is I would just put them away in the closet, put them away, not look at them for a year, two years, pull them out, play with them, put them away. Last year, I started thinking about the Amiga again. I started listening to a few podcasts. The, the Amigos with John and Aaron, I'm sure some of you have heard them. Um, uh, Keith uh, uh, Lafarius with Amiga Rama, started listening to him. Started thinking, you know, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna pull my Amigas out. I'm gonna play with them for two weeks, put them away. What would motivate me to really get back in with the community again? Because I really missed the Amiga community. And I thought, well, I'll start my own show. And so I put some thought, some time into it, looked at what some of my friends were doing online, and realized there was a big uh, uh, niche that needed filling in the, in the Amiga community. And that was somebody who was talking about the original Amiga machines, our classic machines, but not just about video games, because everybody was just talking about Amiga video games. And I love Amiga video games. They're awesome. I've spent hundreds of hours on them. But not too many people were talking about the hardware and the software and the incredible things that the Amiga could do and could still do. Uh, now, there were some of us out there like Amiga Bill, which again, many of you I'm sure know who he is, Bill Winters, with the Guru Meditation, he and Anthony uh, often talked about hardware on their channel. I thought that I would jump in and start doing a show on Amiga hardware and Amiga software. And I thought, well, instead of doing one of these 25, 30 minute shows like a lot of people were doing, I keep each one strictly to 10 minutes, all right? I can get across a good point in 10 minutes. Well, that lasted about uh, a month and a half, maybe. If you look at my uh, YouTube channel, you see a lot of them started out at 10 minutes, 12 minutes. 15, 18, 20, 25. There's just so much to talk about. I, can't, I could never keep it to such a, a, a short episode. I do a lot of reviews on my channel. I do a lot of hardware reviews for new hardware that's come out. Uh, the ACA 500 Plus from Jens Schofield from Individual Computers. Uh, that particular episode I think has over 6,500 to 7,000 uh, views on it. My reviews and my tutorials of Amiga OS 3.14.4, how to install it, how to get the most out of it, those get thousands and thousands of views, which I'm rather proud of. And also my tutorials, where I 
step-by-step, reteach people how to use their Amigas and teach new people who are just coming into the fold how to use their Amigas uh, have become quite popular too. And I get lots and lots of people saying, you know, I couldn't remember how to use the shell. I couldn't remember how to change an icon. But I watched your video and you just walk through it step by step. So it's my way of giving back to the Amiga community. But it wasn't enough. I wanted, I wanted a little bit more. I wanted people to get as excited as I am about the classic Amigas and the current Amigas too because I do love them. So I started thinking about what we could do to bring the community together. I've made dozens and dozens of friends in the community. Some of them, uh, like Chris Toast, some of you know, has gotten to be quite a good friend online. Uh, dozens of other friends. I thought, what if we put together a little competition, a little, little Amiga art competition. We all know the Amiga is fantastic doing artwork. It has been since the day that uh, Deborah Harry and, uh, oh my goodness, somebody help me out. Andy Warhol. Thank you. <laughs> my mind went blank. And Andy Warhol did that, that uh, absolutely wonderful image at the launch of the Amiga 1000 back in 1985. Uh, we all know what the Amiga can do with art. We all know what, the, what it can do with 3D images, with animations. I thought, well, let's, let's try and rekindle that spark. So I got in touch with a good friend of mine. Uh, her name is Vicki, and some of you may know her as Pixel Vixen. She is quite popular on YouTube. Uh, she does tutorials. She does deluxe paint tutorials where you can actually see her live streaming and drawing pictures live and the, the tutorials go sometimes an hour, two hours at a time, and they're just fascinating to watch. She, she, she draws uh, anime and manga type images, really does a great job. And I thought, who better to help me out with an Amiga art competition than an actual artist? Now, she lives in the United Kingdom. We had never spoken a word to each other in our entire lives, but we had become friends over the internet. I'm sure some of you have also experienced that. You never actually talk to the person, but you know who exactly who they are. I walked in here today. I knew who Robert Bernardo was just like that. Never met him a day in my life. Never had a conversation with him. But I knew him through his reputation over the internet. Well, Vicky and I had gotten to become friends, tweeting back and forth, sending each other messages. And uh, when I'd show up in her live stream, she'd chat with me, you know, just talk with me directly. And I thought, you know what? I wanted to ask Vicki if she wants to help. So in August, we started putting out the word that we wanted Amiga artists and anybody in the Amiga community to send us their artwork. I put this on Twitter and on Facebook, some of you may have seen it, asking people to send in for original hand-drawn artwork, photo editing, 3D rendering, and ray tracing, which are three of the common things. Not having any idea what kind of response that we would get. You know, would anyone even care? Well, next thing I know, we're getting submission after submission, and we ended up getting like 40 or 45 submissions from people of artwork they've done on their Amigas, and then many, many, many more people saying, Sorry, Doug, I just don't have time to do it now by the time of your deadline but I want to do it next year. I've got some great ideas. Amiga Bill, uh, have most of you at least heard of Amiga Bill, you know who he is? All right. He had two streams on Twitch, and he's quite a popular streamer. He gets a lot of people uh, watching his Twitch streams that were based entirely on the Amiga art competition. He, he wanted Vicky's opinion on how to do art. And this is exactly what we were trying to accomplish, to, to get people to think about their Amigas again and what their Amigas could do besides playing video games. So today, I wanted to share with you guys what people submitted for the Amiga art competition and chat with you a little bit about it. Intro to my video, YouTube videos, you all, or most of you, many of you have seen this before. So the first picture here 
This was submitted by uh, Robin Evans. He created this entirely on an Amiga 1200, and it's a 32K image. And I love the, the neon. It, it really is, is very striking, the way that, that, that he created light coming from the image itself. Uh, on the actual screen, it looks even better. And you can imagine on a CRT, it's even 10 times better than that. But just bringing the light out of, out of the Amiga. I thought he did a really great job. Uh, next, we'll go on to our next little Amiga-oriented theme here. This one is really cool. This one was, was provided by David Wright. Now, take a look at what he did here. An Amiga-themed office. The original deluxe paint logo here. The original trash can here, of course, the Boeing ball. Here we've got um, Defender of the Crown. That's what this is from. It's a still from Defender of the Crown. The clock. Um, I would personally love to have an office like this myself. And he just created this because we went out and said, hey, send us your artwork. And I think he just did an incredible job. And this one was also done, uh, this is a 32 color, no, this is a, a high color image done with uh, personal paint and TV paint, which is a 16 million color Amiga package. He also submitted another one here, which uh, I think is Bullwinkle Moose myself. I love the color gradations that he did. I love the, the way that he reflected the trees in the water just the thought that he put into it, you know, just, just, just thinking, you know, what can I create? What can I do to, to, to make a beautiful image? And I think David did a really good job there. Um, now this one, this next person is quite the luminary in the Amiga community. There we are. This one is created by Eric Hill, uh, also known as Intricate or Amiga Love. And he hosts a very popular website, AmigaLove.com. If you haven't been there, I recommend joining the forums. It's a lot of fun. And he really went all out with the whole retro theme. 32 color image. Obviously, this is uh, uh, back to the future, but back to the Amiga. <laughs> he just did just an incredible <coughs> job. And on a CRT, it looks absolutely fantastic. 100% hand-drawn image. Mm. Uh, this is uh, a popular Twitch streamer, uh, not that one, this one, um, Domus.hook from Sweden, all right? We're going international here. Our first people were, uh, in general, from the United States. Although I think Robin, no, Robin was from Europe. Robin was from Europe. Uh, Domus.hook, he's from Sweden. He runs a Twitch channel, uh, mainly about the Commodore 64, but also doing a lot of Amiga stuff, hand-drawn, during his lunch hour, he heard about the, the competition. He thought, hey, I know Doug. Why not submit something? Personally, I think it looks like a maybe a psychedelic Pink Floyd album cover or something <laughs> like that. The Illuminati. All right. Now, these, this guy is incredible. His name is Jose. He goes by Jojo073. Uh, you may know him from Twitter. Hand-drawn image. This one is uh, 320 by 256. Uh, he's from Europe. 32 colors. Absolutely beautiful. Not just the woman, but the actual image itself. Just fantastic, the kind of artwork that's still created on the Amiga. Uh, let's look at another one of his images here. There we go. Uh, nice under underwater theme uh, with a mermaid. Color palette is absolutely beautiful, 100% hand drawn. Uh, here, we all know who this is. This is the Borg Queen from Doctor Who. If you look at it just right here, Darth Vader. I can't do this. I can't take these kind of lines and make them so perfect and accurate in deluxe paint like he did. Just the, the talent to be able to do that by hand and the shading and if you look at the original image, this is actually almost a, a chrome, almost a reflective color here. Just created for the competition. Next one, one of my favorites, 
this black cat, just the, the richness of the image, the depth of the black, and the detail that he put in the moon, and he just sat down and decided to create that image. Just phenomenal, phenomenal. Again, deluxe paint on this one. Most of them are deluxe paint. This is, I'm sure, Harry Potter's owl, or somebody else said uh, in the chat when we, when Pixel Vixen and I did a live stream of this, um, uh, either Harry Potter's owl or the owl from um, uh, Labyrinth, the David Bowie movie from back in the 80s, if you remember the, the owl from there, reaching down to grab it. Take a look at this. This is a 16 color Amiga image. This isn't AGA, this isn't 24 bit. This is a 16 color image being mm -hmm. used to create this. Mm -hmm. Just phenomenal, phenomenal. Now this next one is, is quite <clears throat> unique. This gentleman used to use his Amiga to create images for professional brochures back in the, uh, mm -hmm. the 90s and early 2000s. These were done on an Amiga 1200. And these pictures were used in brochures that were sent out uh, for publication to represent these particular parts. I have no idea what these parts are. I mean, that's some kind of electrical thing, I'm sure. But just the fact that he used his Amiga in a professional sense uh, is, is just amazing. And that he submitted these, uh, I, I just think is fantastic. These are from a, from a video game that was unreleased. The gentleman is still working on it. Uh, this is Simone Bernaccia, who's again from Europe. Uh, he's working on a, a Japanese role-playing game called Holy Warrior, but he said they've stopped working on it. I've been talking to him and asking him to maybe start working on it again. We need more people making uh, brand new games for the Amiga community. Beautiful pictures that he created as background images for this uh, unreleased game. Now, a couple of fun images are from Bruce Johnson here. He just created these on a whim for the contest uh, by hand in deluxe paint. He thought, well, let's create some monsters. This guy's from Australia. So now we've got Sweden, Australia, England, and we've had one from Germany in there. And uh, he took these pictures on a CRT and sent them to me. This is another unreleased Amiga game. This one's called Witch Switch, which is a game that uh, this gentleman is working on. His name is Joshua Dolan. And he's been working on this game for a couple of years now. And I think you'll agree, as a 64 color extra half bright image, the amount of detail, you know, th this could be almost any game created in the last 15, 20 years on a console, some of the 2D platformers that have been created. And he's working on this, working on creating this for a traditional ECS Amiga. Just unbelievable. And I hope he finishes the game too. Another person from another country, this guy goes by Puny. And he is in the demo scene. And we all know, heard about the Amiga demo scene. We've all seen the Amiga demos when we were younger. And he's still creating demos. Every year they have Amiga competitions for new demos. And he got in touch with me for two reasons. Number one, he interviewed me for a disc magazine that they create about the Amiga that comes out about two or three times a year. Um, I'll send a link to you guys. Uh, and he created this as kind of an introduction to one of the new Amiga demos that they're working on. Really kind of a cool effect. And you can see how uh, it's got a very demo-y feel to it. Next, moving right along. This one I absolutely love. This is from Mike Mijatov. All right. Now, he's from Serbia. 
He was born and raised in Serbia, lived there most of his life. He now lives in Indiana. But <laughs> these are pre-World War II, uh, some kind of uh, pump or something that was used in Serbia pre-World War II. When I look at this image, I can almost feel the cold. I can feel the, the, the snow crunching under your feet. If you look at it on the actual monitor, and especially on a CRT, you can see these beautiful color gradations down here and just the incredible amount of detail we put into this. This also happens to be the only submission from a, an Amiga 1 computer. This was done on an a, a Amiga 5000, an A5000, uh, using a, uh, what did he say? I think he used personal paint on there. Yes, he used personal paint on there. And, um, and a graphics tablet too, in this other graphics tablet. Love that picture. Now next, we've got a fun picture. Here we are. <laughs> Rest in peace, PC. This is Phil Heron from Europe. He created this in 1995, when he was just a kid. He was probably 15, 16 years old, having fun on his Amiga, uh, drawing a picture about the death of, of the personal computer. I love this picture because it's not taking things too seriously. It's just having fun. Just just a, a, a happy well, tombstone. How happy is a tombstone? But just a happy, fun, exciting picture. I think Phil did a great job. He also submitted a rather dark one, which is a 3D image that he rendered. I think he said maybe a maybe in distant suns, and then touched it up in deep paint. But that one's a little hard to see. Now this next one, I was absolutely flabbergasted and floored when I got this next image here. If it would come up on the screen, there we go. You guys may even recognize that name down there. Eric Schwartz sent me an email. You know him from uh, artwork in Super Frog from Amy the Squirrel and tons and tons of animations that showed up on cover discs back in the 80s and 90s, showed up on Fred Fish discs back in the 80s and 90s. Eric Schwartz was just a <coughs> name that Amiga users knew worldwide. worldwide. He sent me an email. He said, hey Doug, I saw your uh, your promotion for the Amiga Art Contest come across. He says, I thought I'd create something, you know, in support of the Amiga. So he did this on a 4000T tower with an 060, with image effects, Art Department Pro, and Personal Paint 7.3. And, I don't know, it just almost feels like Paulo Picasso coming down and handing me one of his art projects. He's, he's just such a big name. Now, another Amiga Luminary, who sent in their artwork, it is none other than Amiga Bill himself, Bill Winters. This one was not eligible for the competition because he actually worked on this with Pixel Vixen. He did a, a two hour long live stream where he and Pixel Vixen took a photo, 16 colors, that's all, 16 color image here. They took this photo, they rendered a uh, kind of a 3D inch uh, boing ball. They took that and warped it in, um, what did they use? Image effects. They used image effects to give it this warped effect. So this, the, the boing ball rising here, reflected in the water, had the nice wavy water effect. And they brought in the, the, the silhouetted palm trees. Absolutely gorgeous. And just out of the blue, he's streaming for two hours with 50, 60, 70 people watching creating artwork that never would have been created if Vicky and I had decided, you know, you know, ah, now we don't want to mess with the art contest. He did a fantastic job. Okay. Now, let's see. I think we got some, have some from Vicky. Now, Vicky has been drawing for years. Uh, she lives in the United Kingdom, and she's quite a good artist. All of these are hand-drawn images from Vicky. Just go back here. That's a 640 by a 400 image, done in just black and white. And 
nice color image. See how she's done the reflections in the window here? Again, hand drawn. Hmm. These are not scanned in images. She just she just draws all these by hand. She actually does tutorials on this one. You can look up on her website and you can watch her create this from the very first pixel to its completed version. And that, that's not quite the completed version. She said she did this one in about 30 minutes. I, that would take me like a year to draw that. So she's quite, quite the good artist. She generally draws in deluxe paint on an Amiga 600 with a 68,000 CPU with, uh, I think, 8 megs of RAM on it. <laughs> Now going into the photo category, this is another one from Amiga Bill. This was taken in Morocco. He took the picture himself. If you can believe it, that is the entire palette right here. He wanted to represent the 16 color palette by actually putting each color down here as a square. That's the number of colors in this entire gorgeous picture. Just done on an Amiga, just, just done on an Amiga, ECS Amiga. Let's take a look at this next one here. He did this one for uh, the Retro Hour. They wanted pictures of the Retro Hour sent in. If you haven't heard of the Retro Hour, it is a, a podcast in the United Kingdom where uh, Dan Woods, who's been in the Amiga community for 20 years, and Ravi Abbott, who's also been an Amiga fixture for years, do a weekly podcast interviewing some of the most incredible people that you've ever met. Um, have you guys ever listened to the Retro Hour podcast before? They are interviewing people like Scott Adams, who did the VIC-20 video mm -hmm. game, the, 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 the text adventures. They are interviewing people who worked for Sega, they're interviewing people who worked for Commodore back in the day. It's beautiful 45 minute long interviews. I recommend checking them out. And Bill did this picture. He edited this photo in here. He added a few little ducks here. And this is 4096 color hand image, but he cheated. It's actually in 640 by 480, which as you know, ECS Amigas can't do ham in that. So this was done on an AGA Amiga, but using the Amiga's HAM 6 mode instead of its HAM 8 mode. This next picture, one of my very favorites. I absolutely love this one. This is a 16 color image. You know who wow. this is? Yes. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. All right. He took this picture. Uh, Bill is an Emmy Award winning uh, videographer. He's done work for uh, Netflix, and, and uh, he just won an Emmy for uh, one of the video introductions for Major League Baseball. He took this picture of Mike Tyson a few years ago. 16 color image, 16 shades of gray on here. He went in and manually adjusted the contrast and Iron Mike's face here to bring out more details in the uh, tattoo there, removed all the background images, and just made an absolutely stark and gorgeous picture. And uh, like I say, when you see it on a real screen, it looks so much different than mm. seeing it on there. You can see the just gorgeous contrast uh, of, of, of the image of Mike Tyson here. Let's move on a little bit. This one. Also an Amiga Luminary. If you've ever been to Lemon Amiga, which is a very popular web forum, um, this was done by uh, Dan, who runs it, uh, goes by the name of Old School on Lemon Amiga, and this is for a slideshow sample presentation that he that he did. Uh, just took a, a, a scanned image, cropped everything out of it, and presented it like it was going to be a, a, a slide. And I think he did a fantastic job. This one. This is done by a gentleman who goes by the name of Invent71. His name is Kevin Saunders. He's an Australian. He has done things like um, Iridium, which is a new game that's coming out. He's doing a lot of the graphics work for that based on the Commodore 64 and Amiga Classic, Iridium. It's kind of the continuation of that. So he's working on that. He also 
has done the artwork for a lot of Amiga and Commodore 64 video games that you guys may have heard of. Uh, most recently, he did um, all the a lot of the graphics work for Rygar that Graham Cowley did. If any of you have seen Graham's work on, on the Rygar arcade port that was just released about two weeks ago, Invent did that. This is a picture of him, uh, apparently on LSD. <laughs> oh. Extra half bright image. This isn't even a, a hand image. This is just an extra half bright image where he used Brilliance, which is a fantastic program, and just edited the photo to make it unbelievably impactful. I really, really was impressed with this one. This is some character named Douglas Compton who did this one. <laughs> I took a trip with my beautiful wife and my stepdaughter to the Grand Canyon uh, a couple of months ago. I took a picture of this tree uh, on my Canon camera, 10 megapixel camera, brought it into the Amiga as a JPEG file, and, and brought it in via AdPro, Art Department Professional, and brought it into Personal Paint 7.3, which is a brand new update that just came out a few months ago and did a filter uh, to, to give it a painted effect. It looks like Bob Ross came in here and drew himself a nice little tree, and, and you can see the, the, the painted effect going all the way through the image. I thought that was kind of a nice one. By the way, I'm exempt from winning the competition. This next one, uh, on that same trip, we went to Las Vegas, this is a set of hotels in Las Vegas that actually look like they're crooked. They, they actually look like that. This is fairly well what the hotels look like. This is a 256 color image, uh, 640 by 480. And what I did with this one is I took out all of the sky, all of the black sky, and I found this really awesome gradient tool in Personal Paint 7.3. Uh, and applied the gradient tool to the sky to give it kind of a, a neon and exciting, uh, you know, a, a boom in your face look to it. So the sky itself had as much impact as the, the neon lights on all of the, uh, the hotels in Vegas. There. And speaking of Las Vegas, I picked a real winner here and did this one too. This is the Eiffel Tower in Las Vegas converted into a stomping robot with a laser. <laughs> so uh, I don't know why this one didn't win the competition. So. <laughs> Just did that one for fun. Now, pass by there, something completely different, into the 3D category. We didn't have nearly as many entries into the 3D category as I would have liked. This one was submitted by Bruce Johnson from Australia. He drawn a few pictures before too. A lot of you have probably heard of the Amiga Passion with Steve Clifford in the United Kingdom. He does an absolute ton of um, fixing Amigas. Anything from replacing capacitors to fixing traces on Amigas. He does a ton of it. And he created a couple of these images. The first one was for Steve for Steve Clifford. This is just another 3D image that he created. It's a video he took with his phone of his screen because he couldn't send it to me. This was submitted by Invent, the same gentleman who created that really trippy LSD picture we saw before. This is his 3D image that he submitted. I can stare at that all day. That is just so good. So we got a lot of people who submitted their artwork to the Amiga art contest. And it was difficult for Vicky and I to pick out a winner from the competition. Now what we offered was the winner of each category would win a copy of the brand new Personal Paint 7.3C that was just released by uh, AEON a few months ago uh, and sold by places like Amiga Kit. Three copies were graciously donated by Aaron and Jeff from Amiga on the Lake. And so she and I had to go over and think about all these images and pick what our favorite was from each category. And the ones we picked were from Australia. We picked Mike's image 
of the Serbian winter. It just, it, something about it just struck both of us so much. It was so beautiful and just so stark and had such emotion to it. We just, we both agreed on that. I was really surprised Eric Schwartz didn't win, but you know, we have to be true to ourselves. Uh, in the next category, which is, well, now you know who won the 3D category. The photo category, invents picture. Something about it, oh, come on now. There we go. Something about this just really called out to both Vicki and I, the, the starkness of it, the creativity of it. Just, just the, the picture just spoke to both of us. And in the photo category, this is the one we picked in the photo category. And in the 3D category, we picked Bruce Johnson's rendition of the Amiga Passion logo. We thought that he did a great job, and the fact that he actually used one of his Amigas to do something creative for a, a current vendor, I just thought was really great. We thought that that was really awesome of him to do. So he won in that category. We had a lot of fun with it. It was a lot of work. Uh, she and I spent many, many hours uh, practicing, rehearsing, setting up the pictures, deciding how we we're going to present things, and then deciding who we we're going to pick as the winner. But we loved it. It brought the community together. We actually presented all of this on an hour and a half long live stream on YouTube last week, where she and I uh, live streamed together through a Skype call, and we had 60 or 70 people join in watching just about that same thing you saw there, but an hour and a half long, with, with conversation with people in the chat, people saying, gosh, I'm sorry, I wish we could have, you know, I could have submitted a picture in time, but maybe next year, and just people getting excited over the Amiga, getting excited over, over creating again with the Amiga. So we're going to do it again next year, and we're going to make it bigger, we're going to open up the categories to uh, animations, because has been very big in animations, and I really hope that some of you maybe will think about pulling out your old peak programs in your Amiga and maybe sending a submission to us next year for the Amiga Art Competition 2020. Thank you very much. <laughs> Any questions about anything? Doug, uh, when does the when do you start? <laughs> giving entries for the competition next year? You know, we're probably going to start in June, I think. This year we did it in August, and it ran through October. But we're going to give it a little longer this time, so I'm thinking maybe June uh, through October we'll, uh, we'll be taking entries. Um, you were uh, criticizing or you were giving your opinions on all of this artwork. Do you, do you yourself have an art background? I am a photographer from way back in the day. And I've always done a lot with digital photography and traditional photography. I had my own darkroom for years, shot weddings for years. So that's my art background. I cannot draw a smiley face to save my soul. <laughs> uh, where do we find about your, your art competition? You can find that on my website, which is www.penmark.com. One zero M A R C dot Any other questions? I just have a comment. The picture with the owl. Yeah. I think that was for sure the Cygnosis owl. I'm pretty convinced. How did we not think of Harry Potter? We're thinking the uh, background. Why would we not think the Cygnosis owl? Uh, it was definitely. You're right. It is. You're right. <laughs> Jojo is a fantastic artist. The guy who did that, he just he submitted another picture on Twitter the other day of a, a fake video game. Let me bring it up real quick. Because it is so cool. Oh, <laughs> coincidentally, her first thing that came up is she uh, colored her hair. How about that?
This is another one that JoJo did the other day. Um, just out of whim of a fake game of an Amiga capacitor. So it's a super capacitator. And um, <laughs> the game's not real, but he just had such fun creating this Norman Rockwell type image uh -huh. of, a, of a non existent Amiga game. So he is, he's an incredible artist. I recommend following him on Twitter. He's just amazing. Thank you, Doug. You betcha.